Retired Major General Serhii Krivanos of the Ukrainian Armed Forces noted that the length of the Russian-Ukrainian border is extensive, making it challenging for Russia to block all sections effectively. Serhii Krivanos, a political and military figure who served as first deputy commander of the Special Operations Forces and deputy secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, expressed this opinion on Espresso TV. The situation is challenging for the Russians because an offensive in the Kursk region could be replicated in other areas as well. There are numerous critically dangerous targets along Russia's border and they recognize that covering all locations is not feasible. Therefore, the priority is to destabilize the situation and build on any successes achieved, he noted. Krivanos also questioned whether Russia could amass the necessary potential to push Ukrainian forces back to the Ukrainian border. What helps us is that the Russian-Ukraine border is quite long, making it too difficult for the Russians to cover all sections. After our previous raids on Russian territory, they stationed between 7,000 and 15,000 troops in each border region. Currently, this number may be slightly increasing, plus they have internal reserves and up to 15 to 17 regiments in the combat zone on the temporarily occupied territory of Ukraine. Our task is to draw as many Russian forces towards us as possible. Whether we can hold them back, time will tell, he said. Another Ukrainian military expert, Serhii Zuguretz, said that the operation of the Ukrainian Defense Forces in Russia's Kursk region demonstrates that Ukraine can seize the initiative and impose its own terms of engagement. Today, everyone is watching the fighting in the Kursk region. These events have completely changed the narrative of the war when everyone was trying to assess the consequences of Russia's war of attrition. In particular, that Russia has more resources and is constantly putting pressure on our defense lines along the entire front. Now the situation has changed. The Ukrainian armed forces have shown that it is possible to conduct a defensive operation in such a way as to mislead the enemy, force them to change their plans and even impose their initiative. This all applies to the events taking place in the Kursk region, explained Zuguretz. The analyst noted that Russia has already started redeploying forces and equipment from certain parts of the front line in Ukraine. During the full-scale war, Russia removed from storage almost half of all armored vehicles that had been stockpiled there since the 1950s. Of what remains, more than half are in poor technical condition, according to OSINT analyst Covert Cabal, who calculated these reserves using available satellite images. Thus, as of 2021, there were 22,173 units of various armored vehicles in open areas of Russian equipment storage bases. These are different generations of tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers. According to Covert Cabal's calculations, as of 2024, these stocks have fallen dramatically to 12,504 units or by 44%. Moreover, of these 12,000 cars remaining in warehouses, about 6,800 are in poor or downright deplorable condition. According to calculations, there are no T-90 tanks left in Russian warehouses and T-64 and T-55 tanks are only in poor condition. T-62, T-72 and T-80 tanks are available in small quantities and mostly in poor condition. The situation with infantry armored vehicles looks somewhat better. There are about 1,200 BMPs in good condition, as well as almost 1,900 armored personnel carriers of different generations. Russia has probably already passed the peak of demothballing infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers in storage. Most of the BMPs left in storage are rusty and empty hulls that have been there for years and they are starting to pull even older armored vehicles out of storage that they have refused to use until now. But right now, the Russian army apparently simply has no other options, an OSINT analyst who operates on Twitter under the pseudonym Jumpy told Radio Liberty.